It's been a long time since I've used Windows. No. Oh. So, oh. So it's well. I'll just use. Nope, that's not I it. Know. It's why it's. Oh, it's that one. F. Yeah, it's F. Yeah, but the mouse. I'll oh, just is... use the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Nope. Hey. F11. Nope. No, you have to press Function, Function F. I think it's F5. No, F11. No. Out. Anybody know how to use Adobe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I hope you all know who I am. I'm Greg Logan, QA Manager, Coordinator. Um, Hopefully this talk is a little more upbeat than the first one that I gave in Harvard. For those that, those of you that remember, it was less than upbeat. Um, in this case, I think we're actually doing a lot better. So there's sort of three topics that I'm going to cover here. I've only got 15 minutes, so I'm going to try and keep this short. Um, we're going to talk about code coverage. We're going to talk about uh, our continuous integration server, which is actually lacking, and our integration tests. So. Code coverage. Um, for those of you who were in Lars's talk yesterday, the day before, um, our code coverage isn't great. It's at 33% overall with 28% of the branches covered. So that branch coverage is 25% of the inti inside of all possible sets of branches is, are covered, which is definitely a problem. Um, that doesn't include the admin UI tests, though, um, which I believe the, the number of lines of code in the admin UI is included, but the tests for that admin UI are not, which doesn't really seem fair to me. Um, so I'm working on that. I would expect these numbers to be larger than they actually are in this presentation. Um, as a positive point, our code coverage levels are stable. They're not going down. They're not going up. Um, so it's not like we're drastically declining, uh, which I think, to be honest, is good, considering the amount of code that has come in recently. Um, that says to me that while we might not be in great shape in terms of code coverage right now, we're also not getting worse. We're not bringing in code that's untested. Um, the code that we have is covered well. Um, the, the, the code that is covered, rather, is covered well. So if a class is tested, it tends to be tested relatively well. There's lots of different methods being tested, lots of deep, deeper tests that um, look into how it's actually functioning. So that's positive to me. And I, there's nothing I hate worse than looking at a, co at a project and seeing that it has 100% test coverage, and that test coverage consists of instantiating the class, and that's about it. Um, dumb tests are worse than no tests. So in my mind, having poor test coverage isn't necessarily a bad thing, as long as we know that and we're aware of it. This is um, what I look at. Um, for those who follow the dev process, uh, the Cobert Cobertura, I believe, is the plugin name, uh, is what's used to generate this. And sorry, I don't know if I'm losing the mic there. So as you can see, coverage is pretty high, or is 100% for about four different packages, and then basically follows a linear line straight down. Um, more than half of our code isn't tested, uh, which obviously jives well with the 33% test coverage. But it seems to be relatively well, as I said before, it's like there's a couple, I don't know if we're going to see the mouse, which is pretty jerky, but there's a couple of large bundles there with a number of classes that, that are actually well tested. And that's, oh, my apologies, great to see. Um, that coverage does definitely drop off quickly, though. It's, that line is relatively sharp and decreases to zero pretty quickly, but... We'll make progress on that over the next year, that's for sure. Um, I guess I jumped ahead there. We have relatively deep coverage on a few classes, but not broad coverage, obviously. Um, what we have tested is tested well. We obviously need more tests, but I think I, I struggle to imagine a large project that doesn't always need more tests. So um, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, obviously, if you are interested in writing tests, this is a great project. We'd always love to see tests. So by all means, please file pull requests. OK, uh, moving on to the continuous integration server. Um, for those of you who are around way back in the day, we had a project called, or a server called Bamboo. 
Um, this was hosted by Atlassian. And when they shifted some of their cloud offerings around, that went away. We built a server called Nightly that was constantly, constantly throwing errors and basically wasn't terribly useful. Um, so it ended up going away. Lars then built uh, a Nightly that nobody in the project is really aware of because it's not publicly accessible. Um, it's still there, um, but it's almost impossible to use because it's just script-based and you have to have <laughs> SSH logins for it and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm currently working on setting up OpenCast to build in a system called Drone. Um, Drone is, was a, pro a product CI server, something that you could subscribe to and they would host it for you, that has recently gone open source, which means unfortunately that the documentation is crap and or missing. Um, but the system itself works really, really well. It uses Docker as a back end, and so we've got clean build environments every single time. We don't have to worry about things like, oh, it works on the build server, but it doesn't work on the developer's machine or vice versa. It also means that uh, if you as an institution want to set up your own um, CI server in basically exactly the same configuration that we have as a public project, that's about three lines of code. So that's really handy, and once that's done, it's it's pretty close. Um, unfortunately, I'm going on holidays, but once I'm back from holidays, it's very, very close, uh, and I hope to have that done quickly after that. Integration tests. Um, so this is, that graph is from Test Trails, um, which is, I, I'm not sure if I should call what's in Test Trails integration tests or not. When I think of integration tests, I think a lot of automated integration tests. There aren't any of those right now. We used to have some, but they got very old and very broken. Um, so we instead are doing manual integration tests, and for those that are actually being performed, they seem to be passing relatively well, which is great to see. Um, I think that speaks to a lack of resources on the QA standpoint. We've, this, is, this was the 2.2 final QA pass. Um, so we've got people coming in and doing QA tests for us, and that's great. But as you can see, there's more than half of the classes. I, I guess maybe that's maybe not clear on the projector. More than half of the classes didn't get tested, or half the cases, rather, didn't get tested. And that's unfortunate. I mean, this is something that, A, should be automated, and B, if it's not automated, we should be able to get resources from the community to go and do that. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know what happened there. I wasn't terribly involved in that release process, unfortunately. But I think we did the best with what we could. And I'm hoping that as the year goes on, I can automate as much as I can. My goal here is to automate myself out of a job. As far as I'm concerned, at the end of this year, if I'm still doing things manually, I haven't done a very good job. And I think as a QA, that makes a ton of sense. Why are we doing things manually? We should be doing them with a computer. So um, in terms of action points over the next year, I want to get that CI server working and available. Um, it'll be a little while just because I've as I said, I was going on vacation, and um, then we have to get the VM that it's actually going to run on, provisioned and set up and everything, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, generate instructions, that's pretty easy. I've already started on that. Verifying the integration tests, um, those, that's the test rails tests. I want to go through and make sure that they're still valid for the current UI, um, especially if we're merging in that asset manager. I don't know if there are UI changes there, but I would assume so. Um, so somebody needs to go through and make sure that the tests are still current, and then uh, automate them as much as I can. And that comes to the write more tests, right? We need more tests of, of all stripes, whether that's unit tests or integration tests. And that's one of my major goals over the next year. And I believe, yeah, that is the end of my slides, even though it says that it's slide nine of one. So. Um, are there any questions? Stephen? Right, microphones. There we go. It's 
sounds like it's on to me. There you go. Great, thanks. Um, so I would like to see QA activities like testing new things and bug fixes be easier for non-developers to do. And I think some of the things we could do there is make it easier to find the QA servers. Because mm -hmm. um, I have to Google like three or four phrases to try and discover them every time. Yep, for sure. <laughs> should bookmark them, but um, anyway. Um, and the, the other thing is that new features and bug fixes, so uh, they was, can be in the pull request queue for quite a while, and the only way for somebody to QA them is to build their own um, instance. So particularly if the UI changes, so it's good now that people will put screenshots in, but that's not really a substitute for actually testing the impact of a UI change. Um, and last year, Tobias did a nice presentation <laughs> around um, creating feature branches and things like that. And if we could do something like trigger a build of a VM for any pull request that we flag as being worth doing that for, then we could have a whole bunch of instances available to test specific changes in advance of that being committed and merged into the code base. And that would get a lot more um, exposure and hopefully testing of lots of those features much earlier on. Otherwise, we sort of really have to wait until they show up on a, a nightly server. And that's sort of too late. You know, By the time yep. it's been merged, um, everything's done. So the, the more we can make this visible, the more QA work hopefully we can get from uh, a pool of people that is much bigger than just the set of core committers. For sure, yep. And that's one of the nice things about Drone is that it, um, it, it at least from, what, from my testing, appears to support kicking off a build as soon as a pull request has been filed or as soon as a pull, and, as, oops, uh, and as soon as the pull request has been updated. So anytime a pull request is filed or updated after that's been filed, a new build will happen. Um, so we'll at least have a CI view in terms of code coverage and does it compile and whatnot. Um, right now, the current pipeline that I have set up doesn't do anything with the built image, but that doesn't mean that I can't do something like spit out a Docker image. I can definitely start adding things like that if the community would like a Docker image built, for example, um, or even just the tarballs get spat out every time that builds. That's totally doable as well. Um, so that's maybe something that I should bring up on list for sure, because I could see, I could see that being very useful for testing at an end institution. I just don't want to crush whatever server that we're using because that sounds like it would end up hosting a ton of data. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns, complaints? Have I chewed up enough time that the uh, adapter has shown up? Thank <laughs> you. 